Hello, my friends, and welcome again to another worship video with us here at St. Anne's Toronto. It's such a delight to be able to welcome you to our time of prayer and worship as we hear the scriptures proclaimed, as we pray the intercessions, and as we reflect on God's word. For those of you who don't know, my name is Don Byers, and I'm the priest and pastor of the parish of St. Anne's, and it's my delight to welcome you. Know there's a place for you here at St. Anne's. My friends, this weekend we have a joyful occasion. We get to baptize some new Christians. We have two young babies who we will welcome into the church this Sunday, and so we rejoice with them and their families. We will be baptizing Nora as well as Prisca, and I'm so excited. I love baptisms. They're such a wonderful occasion. So my friends, in addition to sharing with us in our online worship video, I invite you to join with us either by live stream or in person in our worship on Sunday, August 22nd at 10.30 a.m. here in this incredible church. My friends, it will be a delight to welcome you for that prayer and worship. Now, my friends, wherever you are, I invite you to take a moment of silence and to enter into this time of prayer and music and to allow God to touch your hearts and to draw you closely to him. And let us pray. Almighty God, we are taught by your word that all our doings without love are worth nothing. Send your Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts that most excellent gift of love, the true bond of peace and of all virtue. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God, so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day, and having done everything, to stand firm. Stand, therefore, and fasten the belt of truth around your waist, and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times, in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in, in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me, so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known the boldness, with boldness, the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly as I must speak. The word of the Lord. A reading from the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, I live because of the Father. So whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate, and they died. But the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, This teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, Does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you, there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe and who was the one that would betray him. And he said, for this reason, I've told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him. Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. 
we've come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God, the Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. There's an incredible stained glass window in our church. It depicts our great patriarch Abraham just about to sacrifice his son Isaac. Now, some of you might be familiar with the story. We read of it in Genesis where God challenges Abraham to sacrifice his one and only son. And just as Abraham's about to do it, an angel prevents him. And God acclaims Abraham's faith. The story is often a troubling one because in a sense it makes us wonder what sort of God is it that will challenge a father to sacrifice a son just simply to prove his faith. But I think the story is so much more than that. I think the story speaks to the reality that faith is never an easy experience for us. To be a person of faith means that we have to have trust or confidence in God when life is often confusing, uncertain, and doubtful. The challenge is, however, that many people think of faith as something that you believe in, something that your mind ascends to, an object or teaching or whatnot. But the reality is, faith is so much more than that. It's about a relationship, a relationship with a living God. Now, I thought of that image and of, about this whole idea of faith as I read our gospel reading for this Sunday. This Sunday, we hear again Jesus speak of himself as the bread of life, and he invites his disciples and all those listening to him to feed upon him, to trust him, and to depend upon him, for he alone can give them life. Now, the problem is, all those who hear him get confused by this. They simply don't get it, and I don't blame them in a sense. They look at Jesus and say, how is it that you are going to give us life with your body? But the problem is that people take Jesus way too literally, I think. I think what Jesus is inviting the people to is to depend upon them to turn to him in a deep and abiding relationship. And that's what faith is about. A deep and abiding relationship when no matter how good or how bad life may be, we constantly depend upon the living God to be our source and our strength. And by speaking of himself as bread, by using imagery that speaks meaningfully to our hunger and satisfaction, Jesus is speaking in a way as a reminder to the people that only in God will people find their ultimate joy and happiness. Now, Jesus doesn't assure that everything will be easy. We have to bear that in mind. But what he does assure us, that if we turn to him, we will find the grace and the encouragement to be able to go through life even in the most doubtful of moments. Christian faith is a faith that believes and trusts that God will provide. And that's an invitation we have to stay. Amen.
In the time after Pentecost, may the breath of the Holy Spirit enliven and renew our parish as we welcome our pastor, Don Byers. Like the apostles, may we at St. Anne's be open to fresh challenges and to new ways of living our commitment to each other. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us continue to pray for those who have safeguarded our lives during the pandemic. Let us pray that vaccines will be available for all, both in Canada and throughout the world. May the Holy Spirit inspire us to find creative paths toward a just economic recovery for our city. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray to the Holy Spirit that we may discern her gifts given to us for the building of God's kingdom. May the flame of creativity inspire artists in every field, men and women of science, farmers, office workers, and laborers. May all work be blessed in God's eyes. God, in your mercy, As the mystical body of Christ, pray that we may embrace every race, religion, and nation as beloved members of God's kingdom. Let us pray for the leaders of Canada and of the world and for the work of peace and reconciliation. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As the apostles received the gifts of tongues, let us ask the Holy Spirit for the gift of listening to the stories which haunt our city in the words of immigrants and refugees, of those without homes, and those who bear painful emotional burdens. Let us listen and respond with care and attention. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us contemplate with awe and wonder the mystery of creation from the starry heavens to the humble life of plants. In the season of rebirth, let us pray for all nesting birds and animals with their young. May their revelation of God's love inspire us to protect and care for the natural world. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer.
from Warden Dave Roeder. It has been exactly one year since I provided a message referencing this time as being dog days of summer. Here's more on that topic. In Jesus' time, the Romans referred to August as dog days because it occurred around the time that Sirius, the so-called dog star in that constellation, appeared to rise alongside the sun in the northern hemisphere. They believed the heat from the two stars combined to make them the hottest days of the year, a period that could bring fever or even catastrophe. In England, dog days were observed in 16th century liturgies. They were removed from the prayer books at the restoration of the monarchy in 1660. Now the Egyptian tradition was more positive and it held that hot dog days heralded a good harvest time to come. And that is exactly what we have happening in the native garden behind the ministry center. This past week, the children and adults who attended Messy Church not only had a marvelous safe and social outing, but they took away early harvest tomatoes, peppers, and kale, encouraged by Doug and Megan who tend that traditional Aboriginal garden. The kids had fun completing their welcome sign for back to church worship. In spite of this being a vacation time, we were pleased to see a good turnout last Sunday for our first in-person worship at St. Anne's in quite some time. You may see minor adjustments on either side of the 1030 online live stream worship based on what's working best for our entire community. We'll keep things the same until September and let you know. Here are a few other things happening around our parish. Regarding the parish hall sever and sell process, well, we completed with our consultants a statement of work that confirms what we will be doing to solicit expressions of interest from property developers later this year. The fundraising campaign committee for the restoration of the church had their inaugural meeting. They are going to approach various foundations and granting agencies to support further work as we approach the 100th anniversary of the interior painting and decorating of our church. On Friday evening past, a fun outside social event happened where eight parishioners played games for six hours straight, raising sponsorship funds to benefit the FaithWorks charity. It is not too late to sponsor this, which you can do by clicking on the Donate tab on the right side of the St. Anne's website and selecting the fourth item of the Canada Helps drop-down menu. It's labeled FaithWorks. Be sure to enter Gameathon, the word, in the comments line, and, and if you also enter Dave Roeder, that could help me win a top fundraiser prize from Arlene. Hmm, on second thought, since I'm married to her, she would probably disqualify me from that prize. Well, that's my update for you. Stay safe, enjoy a balcony, backyard, or park, and I look forward to seeing you in church or online soon. My friends, once again, thank you for joining us for our weekly worship video. I hope you found this time of prayer and reflection and music meaningful for you on your journey of faith. Please know that we're here for you and that all are welcome at St. Anne's. We want you to know that there is a place for you. And as always, my friends, if there's anything you ever need, you can certainly reach out to me and I will be here to walk with you, to listen to your stories, and to pray with you and to support you and your loved ones in your life. My friends, I invite you to join us for our worship tomorrow at 1030. And again, we're back to in-person worship, and I'm so delighted about that. We encourage you, if you can, to register in advance for this service, which you can find those details on our website at saintanne.ca. You will also find the link for the live stream. So you're invited to come, but you're also invited to join us from home. Please know, however you'd like to join us, you are with us. We do encourage you, if you're able, to register in advance, but please don't worry if you're not able to. We can certainly check you and in at the front door. Speaking of which, as I just said, when you come here, we invite you to come to the Gladstone Street entrance. 
and there a greeter will welcome you. Now, if you need a more accessible entrance, you can certainly come from the parking lot side. So I do hope you join us on Sunday. And we got an exciting Sunday planned. This Sunday, we get to baptize two beautiful young babies. We get to baptize Nora and Prisca. And I tell you, I got to meet with their families. I got to talk with them. And I they're just incredible babies and beautiful families, wonderful people. So I hope you will join with us in welcoming Nora and Prisca into the life of our church. So we'll have that on Sunday at 1030. Now, my friends, I know prior to our reopening, we typically had our worship at 10 and then a Zoom conversation at 1030. However, now that we're back to in-person church at 1030, we need to adjust a few things around. We still want to offer that live stream discussion, that conversation on Zoom, uh, either before or after church, and the wardens and I are trying to discern a time best. However, because of the baptism this Sunday, and because of me being away the following Sunday, for the next two weeks, we won't have our Zoom conversation after church. Instead, the first Sunday in September, we will have the conversation at 9 a.m. from 9 to 10, on Zoom. So we'll share that on our website. We'll give details for that. But just know that for the next couple of weeks, we'll be taking a break from our Zoom conversation and discussion as we try to figure out the best way to do it. But rest assured, we're going to do whatever we can to make sure that all of you have an opportunity to engage and to pray and to worship with us. We're just trying to fine tune some of the details. Speaking of September, we'll have some other opportunities for prayer and worship, which we'll be sharing with you over in the coming weeks. So do take a look at our uh, weekly email notices on our Facebook page and, and on our website. And if you'd like to sign up for our email list, please let us know. You can email us uh, or you can email me by visiting our website. Again, details will be posted at the bottom of your screen. My friends, this week I will be away for most of the week. However, we'll be welcoming the Reverend Stephen Drakeford next Sunday to our worship on August 29th. Uh, Stephen is a wonderful priest. Many of you likely know him. Stephen, I believe, has come to our church and spoken before uh, about some of the work that he has done. So I do welcome you to join Stephen on August 29th. But know that I look forward to joining you tomorrow, August 22nd at 10.30 a.m., for our celebration of Eucharist and baptism. I'm really looking forward to this opportunity. It's going to be a fun Sunday. I love baptisms and they're just such joyful days. So I hope you will join us for that. Again, my friends, know my prayers for you. May God bless you. May God keep you. And may God let his face shine upon you always. God bless.